If you're confused about what you should be doing in a tricolor turf war, you're in the right place. We'll be going over the ins and outs of attacking, defending, and some more advanced strategies, so let's get to it. The basics of the mode seems like the best place to start. The team with the most ink wins, just like a normal turf war. But there are two big differences between this and a normal turf war. First, there are three teams. The attacking team spawns on the ends of the map and only have two team members each. The defending team spawns in the center of the map. Two members of each team will spawn on each side of the map. The second difference is that an object called the Ultra Signal appears in the center of the map. The attacking team wants this, and the defenders, well, they don't want anyone to get this. Once captured, the Sprinkler of Doom, yes, that's really the name, will be activated, which continuously sprays the ink of the team who captured the Ultra Signal in the area around it. That's a big benefit, but it's not going to win the match by itself. So let's get into the nitty gritty for attacking, then defending. To win a tricolor turf war as the attacking team, the defending team must be in either second or third place at the end of the match. That means that even if the other attacking team has the most ink, you still win. There's some deeper strategy than that, but we'll get to that a little later. So what do you actually do if you want to win? Step 1. Build your special as fast as you can when the match starts. Step 2. If you already have your special, Ink as much turf as you can until the Ultra Signal appears, which will be 20 seconds after the start of the match. Step 3. Do your best to coordinate your special with your teammate so one of you can capture the Ultra Signal. You don't even need to necessarily splat the defending team as long as you're standing between them and the Ultra Signal while your teammate is capturing it. If you get splatted without capturing the Ultra Signal, paint for your special so you can try again. The defending team spawns in the middle of the map, so more likely than not, there will always be one of them around. That's why your best chances of getting the Ultra Signal is to splat the nearby defending team members and then rush the Ultra Signal before they can respawn. Keep an eye on how many defending team members are currently spawned in so you know when you'll have the best chance of capturing the Ultra Signal. Now you might be asking yourself, what about the other attacking team? You're not exactly on the same team since you can splat each other, so this is where things get tricky. In terms of clout, it's better for your team to capture both Ultra Signals. You, and by extension your team, will get extra clout by capturing them. But even attempting it gives some clout. If you want the best chances of winning the match, I'd recommend anyone get the Ultra Signal, even if it isn't your team. The Ultra Signal isn't the end-all be-all, but it's a huge help towards winning this mode. If both Ultra Signals are already captured, it's all about taking ink away from the defending team. Did you hear me? Try not to paint over the ink of the other attacking team, especially if they're winning. It's far more advantageous to be squeezing the defending team from both sides, since they'll have their backs turned to someone at all times this way. Here's what happens if you're covering the attacking team's ink. Let's say the defending team has 40%, and the two attacking teams have 30% each. If you're painting over the other attacker ink, your ink is increasing while the other team is decreasing. So let's say you have 35% now, and they have 25%. Great, the defending team still wins. But if you would have taken that ink away from the defending team, now you're both at 35%, while the other attacking team is at 30%. So you actually have a better chance of winning this way. And that's not even considering that the other attacking team is most likely taking ink away from the defending team, which would push them down even further. So to sum it up, bide your time to get your special. Take out the defending team or anyone else in your way to capture the Ultra Signal. Repeat this until both Ultra Signals are captured. Then make sure you're covering as much of the defending team's ink as possible. And it's just that easy. Well, except for one more thing, but I'll cover that towards the end of the video. The process for defending is a little simpler to me. For starters, if you can splat them, do it. There's no complicated strategy about who to splat and when. Your team is the only one that matters. The steps are slightly different from attacking, but it's still a similar process. Step 1. Rather than building your special quickly, make a perimeter and keep an eye on where the enemies will be coming from. It's both sides, so you'll have to keep an eye out behind you. Step 2. Start building up your special so you can defend, but keep your attention on paths that the attacking team can use to get to the Ultra Signal. Step 3. Don't stray too far from the Ultra Signal in case someone tries to capture it. The one capturing it is completely vulnerable, so you can splat them as long as you can get to them. Repeat those steps anytime you respawn. In general, stay near the Ultra Signal 
but not directly on top of it. The attackers will always be looking in that direction, so you'll want to stay within range of it, but not right next to it. Otherwise, they can use a special to splat you or displace you. In the meantime, they'll capture the ultra signal uncontested. Things change a little if the attackers capture both ultra signals. In that case, you'll want to be pushing into their bases aggressively and splatting them as much as possible. Because of where you spawn as the defending team, there's a higher chance to be spawn camped. So other than the ultra signal being in the center of the map, that's all the more reason you want to be holding your ground as much as possible, but it turns into far more of a free-for-all once both ultra signals have been captured. Now it's time to talk about the one more thing that makes this mode more complicated than it seems. The clout rewarded after the match. So you know how I said something like, blah blah blah, only cover defender ink if you're attacking. It's ever so slightly more complex than that. If the other attacking team is the one who's in first place at halftime, you actually don't want them to have the most ink, but you also don't want the defending team to win either. Here's how the scoring works. The defending team gets a base 9,000 clout for winning, while the attackers would only get clout based on their ink. That's a lot of clout. The attacking teams, if they win, don't get the same amount of clout. The team with the most ink gets 6,000, while the other attacking team gets 5,000. So you do want to be in first place, but don't do it at the expense of letting the defending team win. And finally, there's the clout that you get from the ultra signal. This is probably the most important part in terms of gaining clout for your team. Attempting to get the ultra signal earns you 300 clout, but you only get it if you never capture the ultra signal. Capturing the ultra signal gets your team 2500 clout. So if your team captures both, but you lose, you'll still earn around 6,000 clout for your team once you add in your clout from painting. On the other hand, if you capture both ultra signals and have the most ink, you walk away with a whopping 11,000 clout. So here's the breakdown. If you're just trying to win your matches to boost your Splatfest rank, win the matches under any circumstances. That means the attackers only focus on defenders. Build your specials and get the ultra signal. Defenders should try to keep the attackers away from the Ultra Signal to make it easier to win, but just make sure you're focusing more on the team in the lead. If you're trying to get the most clout for your team, it gets hairy. Attackers shouldn't let the other attacking team capture the Ultra Signal, since that's clout that your team is losing out on. And if you want to go a step further, you don't even want them to attempt capturing the Ultra Signal. On top of that, have the most ink, so you not only win the match, but you also get extra clout. So simple, yeah. To do the best for your team while defending, you'll want to keep the attackers away from the ultra signal, keeping them from capturing it, but you'll actually not even want them to attempt capturing it either. Other than that, focus on the attacking team with the most ink and keep them out of the center of the map as much as possible. Like and subscribe if you want. Thanks for watching, hopefully it helped. Good luck and good splatting.